I want to thank everybody for joining this call. It has been a while since we've done a uh, doctor's call. I want to thank our speakers, Dr. Jeff Marangel, who's talking to us from Pennsylvania, Dr. Gary Sconyers, who's talking to us from Texas, and for Dr. Stephen Davis, who's talking to us from Redding, California, and Dr. Yuri Krohn, who's talking to you from Eagle Point, Oregon. Why don't we have Yuri give us the first information regarding Clean Sweep, how he came about it and how we introduced it into the practice and what the meaning of dirty energy, the implications, what it means to your practice. Okay. So about Clean Sweep, how it appeared, how we discovered Clean Sweep. It is a result of our research with Professor Joy Jones from California University of Irvine, who did for 10 years research with pranic healers who healed gamma-radiated cells. Gamma-radiated cells means that they were terribly damaged and all these DNA were torn apart. And nevertheless, they were able to restore these cells. But condition for this restoration was a clean, energetically clean environment. They prepared his lab cleaned it from dirty energy, and only then they had positive results. When he tried to repeat these results in regular labs, he had not more than 10% success, and when he tried to repeat these results in especially energetically dirty lab, like labs where they dissected animals, he had zero success for more than 10 years. In other words, he could not repeat this experiment in a regular lab. So when we met, we suggested him use our vital force technology, and we were sure that we can overcome this dirty energy just by force, I would say, creating much more energetic, much more stronger energy than healer can project. So we did this result, this experiment, but the result was the same like with healers, absolutely, plus minus 1%. So, in other words, in energetically dirty environment, even very strong energy could not heal these damaged cells. It was really striking for me, but that, but because just think about this. Very powerful healers who could heal even cancer patients could not heal these cells. It means that in being isolated in the human body, they are supported by other systems and energetically and in many ways, so they could be healed, but uh, being separated, it couldn't be healed, which means that the body spends a lot of energy trying to help the cells when they are in the body, and uh, it means that uh, this uh, energetically dirty environment tremendously affects the healing process. So we were determined then to develop energy pattern which would help to clean environment to the extent that healing process would be effective. So we made these energies, long story, I don't want to go into details, we made these energies, and in the first time when Professor Joy Jones tried this energy in his dirty lab, he had 70% success instead of zero, which is tremendous, of course, increase, and since then we perfected and developed more and more this energy, and we call it clean sweep, and we thought about how to deliver it to the environment. And, of course, the simplest way is just infuse it into, let's say, simple salt like potassium chloride or in structured water, and then dilute it in uh, regular water. And uh, this spray was, as I said, tested very effectively. And since then, uh, it's already more than a year past, and we have uh, really good results with clean sweep. And I would say the most impressive research was done by Dr. Gary, who is right now on the on call, and he will tell you probably much better than me what results are. Dr. Sconyers, can you share with us, like, not only the fact that you've been using it, but some of the particulars that you've seen, because you certainly have been putting it out to your patients and using a lot of the product. Okay, I've been, uh, I, I use this for almost all, even our old patients, but uh, for certainly uh, our new patients. But we have a very pretty diverse clientele. We deal with 
lifestyle lines patients. We deal with quite a few athletes. We deal with ADD, autism. We've been even using the clean sweep on pets. And some of the feedback we're getting, and, and even the results when we're testing the patients, there is no doubt that this is really calming down the sympathetic system. And with these ADD kids and hyperactive kids, and I've got a couple of teachers that's using this in their classroom. Uh, one teacher teaches a third grade. She gets permission from supervisor, principal, whatever you call them. But anyway, she sprays six of her students. She has about 18 in her class, and she has six of them really hyperactive. And she'll spray the clean sweep basically inside, outside the knees, inside, outside the ankles uh, on the thymus. And she just swears by this. And she says that the kids will calm down. Usually it will last for about four to six hours. And some of those kids, they, they've been on Ritalin, and, and I think three of them is off Ritalin and uh, Silert now. So they're, we're doing other things with them too, nutrition and, and all that. But, but in the class, because of fluorescent lights and all this other stuff, it really bothered uh, some of these kids that are really hyper. And she thinks Clean Sweep has really, uh, really has neutralized that. What other things have you seen? I mean, you're giving out bottles to your patients and they're taking them home. Is that correct? Yes, we've got a lot of our patients. They, uh, they work, of course. Uh, they use cell phones. I've tested some people about heavy cell phone use. And after they use the cell phones, sometimes they'll do it before, but after especially. And some of these guys are on the phone for quite a long time. They'll spray it on their thymus, but they'll spray it on the brain stem, and they'll spray it behind the ears. And they really feel like that this is really helps to release the negative radiation. I've tested them, and it, it's testing good. And are you seeing any difference <coughs> in patients that are using it in, in their homes and on a regular basis? Are you seeing any difference in their healing responses? Every Lyme patient I have is using Clean Sweet. And they're using it, of course, in their house. Also, they use it when they drive because, of course, the magnetic fields inside a car for a pretty severe neurological disease patient is pretty stressful. So some of these patients are using this basically when they drive and especially when they go to bed. They'll use it right before they go to bed. They think they sleep better. And then sometimes they'll even spray it where, where the inflammation is and also where the pain is. And they think it takes the edge off the pain sometimes. Great. Gary, I'm sure that there are several practitioners that are on the phone that would like to know what you tell the patients when you're giving them clean sweep. How do you explain it to them? Well, we're an energetic clinic, so our patients are, are pretty well versed of what we do and the vibrations, frequencies, and all this. And the way I basically clarify what clean sweep does it, it basically helps to get the negative energy, the dirty energy, like Yuri said, basically clean it out, sweep it out. And then it helps because almost all of our patients, they are sympathetic driven. So it helps to balance the sympathetic system. That helps them to be able to control their emotions and they're not in that fight or flight syndrome all the time. So they're noticing a calming effect? Oh, yes, yeah. And you were talking about animals? Well, we've got a Brussel Griffon, and Bella is super hyperactive. And since we've been using a clean sweep, she is calm most of the time. I mean, it's a drastic, drastic change. And then we've got other clients that try the same thing. They're getting the same results. And what we do, we spray it on the just a little bit on, on the stomach and, and a little bit under the neck, and that's all we do. And, and we'll spray just a little bit over their space, too, but, uh, but that's... But within, I mean, within a minute, you can tell the difference. And are you using it in the office as well? Oh, yeah. The people that work there spray it over their space because everybody's working on computers a lot. And we've got a couple of people here, here that are really sensitive to electromagnetic stress, so those people use it like four to six times per day. Uh, it's Dr. Jack Liggett right there in uh, Florida. And I'm wondering if you've used it on any cats uh, to calm them down. Cats can be pretty tough to handle, and they uh, sometimes you can't even handle them at all. And we have a product that's uh, made from the saliva of cats that helps calm them down some, but this sounds a lot better. And you say you just spray it on their throat area and their stomach. 
So, yeah, that's all you do. You you can spray it around their space a little bit, but usually I just spray it uh, under their neck and then do a little bit under the stomach, and that's it. How many times uh, a day do you do it? I just do it two times. Uh, three times, did you two, say? Two times. Two times a day? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's uh, it'd be worth trying. And some of, uh, as far as you say, calming them down, is that right? Yeah, it is. I mean, it was absolutely dramatic because Bella just every time there's you know there's a sound or anything, she reacts to it. And now she uh, she's cut that out almost eighty percent. She's not. She's pretty calm. Yeah. Do they get sleepy and go to sleep, or they just yeah it relaxes? Just relax them. Yeah, it relaxes. Yeah. I think another product which we yeah, uh, plan to discuss today, stress relief can help cats because we had a report from veterinarians using stress relief and giving them just a sip of uh, uh, some energy of stress relief into mouth, and they uh, really calm down. Yeah, I've used the stress relief, but I thought this being external might be a lot easier because some of them can't get to their mouth. No, you can't. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Doctor. I appreciate you, it. You bet. Okay. So, Jeff, you want to share with us or, or uh, uh, Dr. Davis? Oh, yeah. I'd like to just fill in a few blanks. Um, <laughs> of course. You know us. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I've gotten very enamored with uh, electromagnetic stress over the last two years, especially um, in, in doing some research work with uh, Dr. Magda Havis from Trent University in Canada. And we recently published a, a study where we did real-time heart rate and the exposure of people to, um, to 2.4 gigahertz phones, the, the handheld deck phones. And, and we'll gladly, as soon as that's published, we'll get that to everybody on the call and post it up on our websites. But um, suffice it to say that what we have observed with the clean sweep, I was blinded when I looked at these heart rate variabilities. And I predicted who would be the most reactive based on their HRV pattern when I was blinded to them. And then when I then we cracked the second half of the data, and I was 100% right. And the people with pre-existing biological burdens, be it closed head injuries, viral loads, Lyme's disease, so forth and so on, have a very, very difficult time recovering from their biological burden because now – the electromagnetic stress is a burden that they can never escape from in their environment unless they create a, an organized energetic environment with the clean sweep. So with your cases that are very difficult or recalcitrant to, to your therapies, it's usually because they've exhausted their autonomic response to a point where it's so disorganized that the electromagnetic stress of the environment is now become their major toxic burden, and they can't recover from a biological stress or a metabolic stress because they are carrying an energetic burden that needs to be relieved simultaneous with the metabolic and toxicological burden. And that's one thing we're totally observing. It, it breaks cases for us that we're just treading water before is the easiest way to put it. Also, when we travel, Hotel rooms, airplanes, but especially hotel rooms and lecture rooms, we measure them with the uh, Stetzer meters. These hotels are just toxic with dirty electricity. We spray our trade show booths. We spray, and people come and spend more time in your booth. They don't know why, but it's energetically clean there, and people come. You spray the lecture room. And everybody's more relaxed, and the and the, the air actually feels different. It's that toxic with energy. And, and so whenever you travel, take care of yourselves first. It discharges negative energies and the remnants of negative energies from doing work with people that are, are burdened by toxic emotions. Um, do you see that, Gary? Oh, yes. Yeah. And we, so I clean my treatment rooms after I've done high-level energy work with someone and blown off some emotional discharges that they may be packing. And you, you know, spray your room, 
and um, go on to the next one. By the time you come back, it is energetically cleaned. Well, uh, yeah, one thing else before I forget, the the, the athlete that wears this, what do you call it, armor? Oh, yes, under armor? Uh, yeah, that's very static. Absolutely. And, and we got some cowboys that been using this, and they, they swear that this helps them during during workouts. So, so, so they 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 spray the same area, inside, outside the knees, inside, outside their ankles, and and on the thymus, and they'll spray it around their head too. But uh, they uh, they they feel that it's it's helping their workouts. Well, it's interesting because because all of us are we're kind of like the hundred monkeys. You know, we're all doing our own thing, and we all come to the same conclusions. Yourself, you know, Dr. Davis, myself, we're all landing on that thymus for spraying and blowing off energy okay and that is one you know there the ankles major kidney meridians first chakra meridian etc cetera, etc cetera. this is uh big areas of congested energy flow in the in the human body and especially the thymus area mm-hmm. and so you're just discharging a lot of a lot of stress related to life related to trauma uh, unresolved conflicts etc that people are just a lot more mellow when they're using this. When it comes to large animals, we talked about kitty cats and dogs and so forth, but I had five horses that had to get trimmed the other day, and a couple of the girls are a little ornery with my farrier. So I top-dressed their feed when I fed them in the morning with a solution with uh, 20 drops of stress relief in, made a a little, you know, in water, and I put it on their sweet feed. And then I... um, sprayed them with uh, just a regular fly spray show sheen, and I put the clean sweep in the spray in the horses, and I sprayed them all before before he got there. And uh, you'd have thought I had five old draft horse plugs. So it works really well on, on large animals, too. And, I mean, the, the two girls that gave him a hard time last time pulled their feet away and danced around and everything. They just stood there, picked up their feet, and he did his thing, and he was done in record time. The animals are very, very sensitive to adverse energy. They feel the energy, especially, you know, we're talking about dogs and cats are carnivores, but the herbivores sense danger by energetics. Right. If, if you, I've done this a hundred times, had the horses there, have their head in the corner eating that, you know, and you take a laser and you shine it on, you know, a pen laser and shine it on their butt, they'll look around every time. From 20 feet away, they'll feel that energy because that's where danger comes for them. So their sense of energetics is incredibly higher than, than ours because it, it's life or death for them. So I would check this out with your if you have pets and small or large animals. I just wonder if Dr. Davis could share a little bit about his office and the um, influence that it's had on some of his staff. But before we go to that, there's someone that wants to ask a question. So let's... Let's take their question first. Uh, hello, this is Elena Stoeva from Memphis, Tennessee. And um, I would like to know if you have any observations on the effect of clean sweep on patients undergoing um, frequent imaging tests like x-rays, PET scans, or CAT scans, any imaging tests which overload the organism with radio- radioactive rays. Excellent question. And also, can I add something to that? Also, do you have observations on patients who are undergoing um, uh, radiotherapy, radiation therapy for cancer or other diseases? I have a couple of patients right now that's going through uh, radiation, and uh, we've been using on one since she she started, and she, uh, she feels like that the negative aspects of the radiation sort of really bring her down, and I didn't start using clean sweep on, on her until about the second week when she was doing radiation, and in in that gap really helped us because she felt when she started using it, then and she didn't have a lot of the uh, the negative reactions to uh, to the radiation, and she and she started having tremors, and seemed like when she started using clean sweep, I mean, she started using about two three times a day. The tremors basically went, uh, went away, so I think uh, I think uh, that uh, that is definitely a good place to use clean sweep. And what protocol 
do you recommend for application, like site of application, what time timing in relation to the procedure of uh, radiation? Well, basically what I do, I, I, I spray it back to the neck, and then I spray it again on, yeah, back to the neck, and then I, I spray it on, on the thymus, and again, inside, outside the ankles, inside, outside the knees. And then if there's, and, and then usually a lot of these patients are, are having stress around their liver or kidney, and then I'll spray it around the liver or kidney. And, and how is it related with the, uh, to the time of uh, the radiation procedure? So you apply this immediately before? Or I do it before. They do it before, and they do it after. Right. That's what I've done. Yep. Before and after, very good. And they don't get the radiation sickness. They, no, they, they don't. And the, and the skin, if they're doing, uh, say, on the uh, a breast or whatever, they do not get the uh, adverse effect on the skin uh, near as much, maybe less than half. So is it, uh, is it, uh, uh, does it imply that it would be plausible to use that immediately after surgery, any kind of surgery? Oh, of course. Oh, yes, very much so. On the suture, around the suture? or in acupuncture point, I don't know. Immediately post-surgically, I just because of uh, sterility issues or the fact that if anything goes wrong, it's always your fault, I stay away from direct suture, but I do above and below the wound or the bandaging, and also on the acupuncture meridians, and always on the thymus after post-surgical. Yes, always. Surgery is just a, a controlled trauma. Yes. Your body doesn't know if the person wielding the knife is a bandit or a surgeon, a skilled surgeon. It only knows it's been cut, and it has biological imperatives from being cut, especially thoracic surgery. Uh, as soon as that wound is healed, I, I do the, the sternal uh, scarring with this and cold laser, and the relief is, is just unbelievable, especially by heart rate variability. Uh, they really come out of hypersympathetic atonia. So you use the heart variability as the main um, parameter to monitor? The that's me. That's, response. that's my area of expertise. I've, I've done it for 12 years, so I do everything through the eyes of, of uh, HRV. Uh, I, I just like to watch the, the physiology. It's the window to the autonomic nervous system for, for accurate measuring. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. I would like to add one uh, observation that has been given to us by several people that have either had friends or family in the hospital, either in the emergency room or in, uh, in the, the normal bed situation. And they have been spraying clean sweep in the room, and the number one comment that has come back is that they had more people visiting them in their room, staff, nurses, janitors, and, and that than uh, they had before or any of their previous experiences in being in the hospital, particularly in the emergency room where they would spray around in the emergency room when no one was looking and that they would end up with many people coming in and checking on the patient where normally in an emergency room, you're like, if you get anybody, come in and check on you. So there's something about in that um, hospital environment and that, that when you spray the clean sweep, it has a calming effect and that the staff uh, recognize it and go there without really knowing what's going on. Can I comment to that, please? Sure. What we have documented... In these particular areas where there is uh, life support systems, if you've ever been in the ERs and ICUs and CCUs, the dirty electricity from the equipment is beyond ridiculous mm -hmm. when measured with the, with the stetzer meters and so forth, such that we've, we've coined the phrase type 3 diabetes, electromagnetic-induced diabetes right. mm -hmm. from, from the machines. And so when we filtered the machines uh, mechanically with, with the 
electrical filters, uh, blood sugars decrease and insulin output. Uh, of course, in critical care, you're, you're trying to maintain blood glucose levels in the pancreas <clears throat> is pouring out counter-regulatory hormones. And so when you spray the clean sweep around, you're cleaning probably the dirtiest electromagnetic environment in any hospital. Mm. And just and, and people will come there because it's a safe zone. It feels good. They don't even know why they're there, but it's a safe zone to be there. Okay. And, it's a, and, it, and it's a harmonized zone energetically now, where before it was a cacophony of both electromagnetic energetics and human angst has its own energy. Absolutely. Do you, would you guys agree? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I agree. So this is like the dirtiest zone of the hospital. And I mean, my mother-in-law is on an Alzheimer ward. Every time I go to visit, I spray this around all the rooms on her pillow, on her clothes, in her closet, and everybody's mellow. I mean, what are you going to do? It's, you can't hurt anybody. It makes every, everything calmer, better. Uh, Jeff, what I want to add uh, about electromagnetic pollution, you, you see the, all these CAT scans, all these X-rays and MRIs, they are terribly pollute body of people uh, with all this electromagnetic junk. And what's interesting, that energy we, we, which they bring, since it's close to the body and uh, imposed on the body, it sits in the body for a long, long time because our body is 70% water. You will now restructure your water of the body mainly with this <laughs> polluted energy. And uh, clean sweep can, uh, of course, uh, help to clean this uh, dirt, and, and the faster the better, I would say, to use it after any kind of X-ray, uh, radiation, or um, CAT scans, uh, MRIs, and all this stuff. Yuri, did you say the longer the better? Uh, the faster the better after, the faster, the faster yeah, the better. after yes. yeah, expose, exposure to this electromagnetic radiation, because this, uh, I would say, virus, energetic program is sitting in your body and doing who knows what, and uh, the faster you clean them, the better. Mm -hmm. Dr. Davis, you want to tell us about how, what Debbie, what your wife's experience in the office has been using the clean sweep? Sure, we've had a number of different experiences, <clears throat> but to kind of follow up on what Jeff said just a few moments ago and what Yuri just mentioned, is that um, one of the tenets, and just to kind of uh, exaggerate a little bit, one of the tenets of homeopathic medicine is using energy, uh, good energy, for the purpose of, of and, and one of the carriers is water. And one of the interesting phenomena about water is it has memory, and even though you may have cleaned the water through a variety of techniques, i.e. Uh, filtration systems, the energy that's still impregnated into it is still affecting everybody. And so the point is, is that once we go through these chaotic energy zones, whether it be an airport, whether it be a hospital, um, mm -hmm. whether it be uh, uh, in front of your microwave, in front of your cell phone, your computers, also all of these things, uh, the, the world has kind of come around the last 10 years specifically, there's a consciousness that's been created, that all of these things are hostile energies. And in that is creating chaos. And so the best thing uh, that I share with our patients is watch the weather channel. And because they get all confused about the energy. So watch the weather channel, look at the weather map. And we watch the storms as they come across, and those are chaotic energies. Well, what happens if one of those chaotic energies is stuck in your body? Right. We know it's disease. We know harmony and balance creates uh, good feelings, good emotions, and long life. We know chaos, wherever it is, creates a disharmony and disease. This is a, a common tenet of all natural practices that go back thousands of years. The problem has been, in the last 50 years, this incredible uh, pollution, if you will, this incredible bombardment of what we would call negative energies, or chaotic energies, and our human uh, bio system hasn't uh, environmentally and ecologically and uh, uh, stepped up to all this chaos. So what happens is, is that our body is constantly being derailed by this, and it can be from negative patients who are carrying in the woes of the world because 
you know, the, they're, they're, they're losing their house, they're losing their cars, they're losing whatever, they're losing their health benefits because they're unemployed, and they're looking for ways of being able to survive. So uh, Jeff made a, a, a comment a few moments ago about this sympathetic uh, uh, drive. Uh, everybody in America is in sympathetic drive. <laughs> and in that sympathetic drive, uh, Jeff and I had a conversation about a year ago, and in that uh, we had this little kind of epiphany of sorts, and that is the parasympathetic system is actually atrophying. So just like when you put your arm in a cast and your muscle within three days reduces by about 30%, uh, a non-used parasympathetic system, which is your healing system, can't seem to get the whole thing back together. So the beauty and actually the miracle of this thing we call clean sweep, we have a, a, a society that doesn't get energy at all. <laughs> uh, and what we have is, is I think our, our good friends, the Beach Boys, they sing about good vibrations, and we weren't so sure about that. <laughs> right? And the thing of it is, you can walk into a, any kind of a business meeting where everybody's fussy and we feel all that negative energy, right? And then you walk into to some party place and you get all kinds of positive energy, right? And the thing of it is, we all feel it. We all know it. And the thing of it is, we carry it around with us because sometimes when we go into those places, like a hospital where somebody's death and dying, everybody's all moaning and groaning and complaining, what happens is you pick up their energy and carry it with you and you don't feel so good. So the beauty is, is that what Yuri has uh, miraculously done is been able to create what I kind of call as a Lysol of the negative energy world. We spend so much time and energy worrying about air fresheners and killing germs because, oh, my goodness, Ryan's Blue's coming. It's like, what about that negative energy ball that's coming? Yeah. <laughs> and then dumps all over you in your office or all over in your, uh, you know, it's your, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just left the energy, you know, negative energy bomb on your place, and you, and then depending on how busy your practice is, it can be hundreds of people. If it's in a hospital, thousands. And so the thing of it, and then of course you got all the fear and worry because when people are in a hospital situation, they're having surgery. Uh, nine out of ten people are in a very fearful uh, state. As a matter of fact, an awful lot of people passed out, get all nauseated and, and, and upset, uh, just walking into a hospital because of the fear and the impending doom and what is it going to look like and all that jazz. So you got nothing but negative energy swirling in the place. Everybody hates hospitals because of negative energy. So we have a thing. We have something. Yuri's created the Lysol of the negative energy world. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well said, Dr. Davis. Well said. And, and so what happens in my office, just like Jeff's office and, and Dr. Shkanyo's office, is that, uh, and many of you that are listening, is you got sick and dying folks who are emotional wrecks coming in and dumping their negative energy all over you and your staff, and you wonder why everybody feels so bad. And the thing of it is, is that with a little help. So in my world, I'm just a simple guy. I'm a simple country doc. So we put uh, this because, you know, people spraying things, they, they keep waiting for that, that scent. You know, it's like, I don't smell lavender. How come they don't put lavender in that thing? <laughs> <laughs> How come they have rose? You know, it's like, isn't that a mister for scent? So... When we first got exposed to this, what I did is I just, just thinking, it's like, how do we make this practical? Because I'm a practical guy, and what we do is we try to make it easy for all our fussy people who don't understand energy. And so what I do is I have them uh, get, get themselves, or, and you see these, you know, Hallmark and other places, you get a little fountain. they got that water percolating thing. And some people have it on their desk, and some of you have nice, beautiful ones in your office and your home. Uh, put an ounce of the uh yes, into your fountain and just let it mist and percolate all day. I have a 79-year, I mean, I have a 99-year-old patient that's been trying to die on us for 10 years. And finally, two weeks ago, she checked out, said goodbye to everybody. It was very, very beautiful, very loving. She gave her daughter a kiss and said, it's time for me to go, and she went to sleep and didn't wake up. But the point was, is that in those last few weeks of having uh, this near-death experience waiting for God to take her home, is that she was agitated. Fear was beginning to get her, and she didn't really know why. Her, her, her functional uh, cognition was kind of uh, temporary at best, and her functional ability to get around to, to eat was temporary at best. So uh, uh, 
we had is that I had her daughter just put a little fountain into the bedroom. And the mom was calm. The emotions were calm. Mom slept, rested. Uh, she slept 20 hours a day uh, because she was at peace. That was kind of cool. Mm, yes. So for folks that are struggling and, you know, and, and having lots of stuff, you are, are, are some of our folks, life is just unbearable. Um, Murphy's laws hit them. Uh, along with that, the new financial package of America has hit them, and so they're looking for, you know, somehow to figure out how to pay their bills and to take care of the house and keep their car and all that stuff. And an easy way of just because what will happen is when you're in that sympathetic drive 24-7 is that getting to sleep at night is real tough. And if you could just create a safe haven, which is your bedroom, where it is safe, and energetically you can kind of let some things go, uh, what happens is that it's a calming effect. So, yeah, you can spray it on these areas that, that have been mentioned before, but uh, more importantly, <coughs> you can actually uh, just have it percolating in their room, and it's interesting. Uh, you get a, you yourself begin to let go and release the energies, and then as that happens, it neutralizes. So I see it as a, uh, as a wonderful broad-spectrum lysol of electromagnet pollution. And just how do we get it percolating on a regular basis? And so out of our practice, a couple of things. So every once in a while, a patient will come in and dump all their emotions or garbage and how broke they are and how sick everybody is and yappa yappa. And, you know, my, my wife runs the front office, and so in doing so, she's the business manager and things. And so sometimes, you know, those patients just dump lots of information on them. She just particularly doesn't want to hear. <laughs> but but being gracious and loving, she listens to it, empathizes with them, and what happens is that she'll take on their energy. So we figured out a way to protect her, uh, a couple of other things that Fury and Constance created. But uh, this, in and of itself, and those real negative, just by misting it, by you can close your eyes and just like, a few inches away from your face, just kind of mist it, and you get this breath of, ah, fine, that, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> just b- busted that negative uh, thing, you know. So it's, it's good. A tremendously, it's difficult for people to get. But everything in energy medicine is difficult for people to get. The beauty is outcome. The outcome continues to be successful, and that is uh, children or ADD and ADHD children or autistic spectrum disorder children who are uh, agitated and in front of TV, in front of computers, and those kinds of things, uh, by having this available, they can calm down and uh, go to sleep and, and, and be uh, functional in school and those kinds of things. And then along with that is that our age, particularly our dementia patients, because what happens, they get agitated, their veil of uh, their frontal lobe kind of goes, and they say things that are hurtful to everybody, and they get mean and hateful and all that stuff. And this kind of quiets that down and puts a little pleasant thing back into them. So I think this is a wonderful discovery. I think it's a miracle. It's going to be one of those kind of fun things to see how those in those creative minds that are out here listening uh, can see other applications and how we can use this and move it but it's very, very cute on just what appears to be a very simple thing, electromagnetic Lysol, <laughs> changes dramatically, instantly, the emotions and the energy that is there that's got folks. Everything from uh, uh, panic, uh, phobias, fears, uh, anger, frustration, et cetera, uh, can all be changed and shifted. And as Jeff and Dr. Shader said earlier, is that, well, what happens is you have those those individuals and patients, it becomes a safe haven, and they don't know why they're here, and they don't know why they want to stick around, and they're enjoying themselves because energetically uh, it feels real good, but they don't know. The intuitive body knows, their subconscious knows, but their head hasn't quite figured it out. Great. So is there anybody that has any additional questions regarding the clean sweep? I have a question. Uh, from what I hear, I realize that you treat the patients without difference whether they're aware of being treated or no. Have you noticed difference in the responses from people who are aware of being treated with this and the ones who are not? In other words, have you tested the possible placebo effect? Can I answer that one? <laughs> sure, Jeff. I go stealth mode all the time. <laughs> and you guys know that. <laughs> My people hardly ever know what they're getting. <laughs> and it's to eliminate that placebo effect. That's gone with animals. And 
all of these things work exceedingly, exceedingly well with veterinary medicine, even plants, I mean, which is a, a, a whole other discussion. I do a lot of real-time heart monitoring because I see the energetic effect through electroacupuncture, uh, you know, volt testing and so forth, through range of motion of muscles and physical changes in the body when they're exposed to these energies. But I also want to see the effect on the autonomic nervous system. I guess now is as good a time as any to talk a little bit about the, the, the new stress relief because we're seeing that the energetic effect of subtle energy is cumulative. It takes time to organize the energy fields and the energy systems. And we expect often, especially those of us who use a, a wide armamentarium of herbs and vitamins, uh, clinical nutrition, energy tools like laser and scanar and so forth and so on, including pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals of a very high caliber, we expect these rapid changes in physiology, which can happen by biochemical means and metabolic means. But the energy systems change with persistence, and the new stress relief is of a broader organizing spectrum than the old one. It goes deeper and works stronger over time, while still giving an immediate relaxing response that's observable by physical measurement. In my case, heart rate variability or pulse or whatever blood pressures will drop when it's utilized. So I think we need to understand and appreciate that the energy tools take time and are they're called subtle energy for a reason. We talk a lot about the dramatic changes, but persistence with them is for me a, a large key that I've learned over the years of using these. Yeah, you're you're right on, Joe. And uh, you're more dynamic and uh, and chasing down all the gadgetry to validate these things, but for sure. In the world of testing, this is one of those ongoing stresses that we have as clinicians is that we're so comfortable in biochemistry, so it's always easy to do a blood test. But when we step into energetic testing and trying to sort it out, it's very, very difficult to pinpoint what's really going on within the system. And your expertise is tremendously valuable because of your persistence in doing what's excellent and continue to chase it down to eliminate what variables are there. Unfortunately, you can't eliminate all of them because they are there. But the big thing is that our body and its sensory system of survival is that any impending doom, whatever it may be, we call stress. And you're going to have a trigger on the sympathetic parasympathetic system. And if it's not in balance, then chaos will ensue. So the drama for all of us is trying to figure out how to bring that patient into peace, happiness, and harmony so that they will become vital, live, and vibrant and that they can continue to extend their life and be a participant in, in the society rather than liability. And the thing of it is, is that this heart rate variable, which Jeff is expert on, I just love hearing you talk about it because it's like this is, this is dialing it in right there as the system is responding. But the placebo effect, I would say, is absolutely minimal. Belief in subtle energy is not required for this to work. Well, the beauty is is that uh, I'm sure that you could be straightforward with this, Jeff, is that nobody believes any of this stuff works. Nobody believes that this stuff works? Right. You mean nobody of your patients? Oh, no, no, no. The patients and the individuals who come in. My patients, when they first see me, they have heard some wonderful miracle stories. They do not believe it, but they're willing to uh, at least investigate. And the interesting <laughs> phenomenon is if we don't make a shift, because, see, I have a, I have a, I'm a private practice, cash-only practice. And in this downturn of what's going on in our society, as I watch the clinicians around regrouping and recrowing, trying to sort things out, your stuff works because my practice is growing. And it grows not because I'm a good speaker and a good salesman. It's the fact that it works. Parents, friends, and relatives go, wow. When you have a, an autistic child who is agitated, locked on, focused, spray a little bit of this into their environment, and it changes their dynamics on how they relate to the humans in the room as well as relating to the gadgets and the computers and TVs in the room, and they go into a more normalized response, uh, not placebo. This is David in Canada. I have a question. I'd like him to describe what a stetsometer is. 
A Stetsometer? It's it's uh, David Stetzer. Is uh, he's an electrical engineer? He has a meter that measures the um, disharmonic electrical frequencies on uh, 110 current. So you can just go to StetzerElectric.com or something, and it, it's delta voltage over delta time. And what happens as our electricity goes in and out of electrical devices like computers and fans and rheostats and so forth, it picks up like electromagnetic dust bunnies on it and they emanate from our walls and from our sockets and they're directly causally related to quantifiable electromagnetic spectrum stress ballasts on lights compact fluorescent light bulbs are horrible this stuff affects the autonomic nervous system oh yes I mean, the CFLs have, have, this is all measurable by scientific electrical, you know, this isn't a subtle energy. We can remediate it using these subtle energy, but it can be quantified in every spectrum, Wi-Fi. All this stuff didn't exist even 20 years ago. There's 2 billion handheld electronic devices on the planet with a billion coming online every year. How many people on this line don't have an iPhone, a BlackBerry, a CrackBerry, a Blueberry, a whatever berry in the pocket? Okay. You know, we have all this stuff. They're now mandating compact fluorescent light bulbs, which they're not only toxic with mercury. And, and Yuri, please speak to the fact that taking mercury energy and making plasma from that to create light creates an energetic pattern of mercury. Am I wrong in physics or not, my friend? Yeah, that's right. But it's not just mercury energy affects people. The matter is that all these frequencies and all these spectrum, all these harmonics are coming from these fluorescent bulbs. They are absolutely extraneous for human body. You know, they bring with it some noise of subtle energy also. It's not just electromagnetic influence. It's influence of subtle energy which is brought by this spectrum to the body and it's uh, you know for millions of years of evolution of human body it never was exposed to this kind of frequencies that's why it works like a virus for energetic system in the body literally like virus you put virus in computer and as soon as something is not exactly right in your body this virus jump up and, and screws up everything so that's what it is Tonight, my second last patient, her mother, her father, she's a nurse, she had headaches, her mother had chronic fatigue, all these other kind of problems. The father had prostate problems. They raised sheep. The sheep had neurological disorders, the rams. I found the electromagnetic stress. I gave sodium alginate, uh, brown seaweed, all this other kind of stuff. I kept trying to treat this family. We looked for radon and everything else. Finally, go. Could that come from a cell tower? We have a cell tower on our farm that pays us $1,500 a month to have next to my bedroom. So we remediated the cell tower and shut off the Wi-Fi in their house, clean sweep the whole house, and they do it constantly now. Everybody's symptoms are gone. And they have a cellular receiving tower right on their farm. In Canada, they're banning them within a half a mile of schools to have cell towers anymore. The bandwidths of this whole cacophony of electromagnetic frequencies interact with each other and create more disharmonic frequencies than their own specific bandwidth alone. Oh yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. And all these wires work like antennas and the more devices are around, the more all your uh, sockets in the home radiate. Subtle energy, it's the energy of different substance, if you wish. It's the energy of subatomic substance. But it is connected to electromagnetic field. And when this cacophony, as Dr. Jeff said, happens in electromagnetic spectrum, then cacophony happens in the subtle energy spectrum. And subtle energy is part of a program, I would say, software of your body. It flows in acupuncture meridians and all those energy centers, so-called chakras and so on. And it, they are disrupted by this cacophony, and that's what's happening. So I don't understand how the electromagnetic environment is affected by the stress relief formula. It is not electromagnetic affected, but affected, as we discussed here, this subtle energy which brought by electromagnetic disharmony 
affects our bodies. So what a clean sweep is doing, it is really erasing these, let me give you an analogy. You have a computer, right? And in computer there is a program. This, in your body there is an energetic program which regulates your biology and affects your thought process and your emotions and everything. So if these programs are disrupted by this noise, then it has difficulty to maintain normal functioning and you need to spend a lot of energy, your body spends a lot of energy to counteract it. It's literally like a software in a computer. And you need to erase these viruses from the system so it would normally function. And that's what clean sleep is doing. It erases and restores harmonious subtle energy which regulates our physiological and other functions. Now, let me say one thing about Clean Sweep. We, uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been using this for the, the young kids who are getting the flu vaccines. And we got three parents that have given these Clean Sweep before the vaccines and after the vaccines. And so far, the side effects has been absolutely minimal. Some of these kids are severely ADD and hopped up. And magnetic stress really bothers these, these young children. And we're finding out that before a vaccine, that can really cause more stress. So we're finding out that, that could be a big tool before it's over with. Dr. Davis or Dr. Marangel, have you observed any of that? To be honest, no, not with our practice. Because of the work I do, we don't encourage the vaccine. So. Yeah, I haven't seen a vaccinated person yet. If we're fortunate here we haven't seen them. And the thing that's happening here in Dallas, they are, I mean, they are almost forcing these yeah. parents to get vaccines. Yeah, you have that they, easy martial law stuff there in that. Oh, it, yeah, it's, it's stressful for these poor parents. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yep. And that's wonderful because, again, going back to just that mechanism is that you introduce a toxin into the body and you're going to get a stress mm-hmm. and you're going to drive them sympathetically. So you can mitigate that by spraying them. Yep. That's awesome. And I think that's wonderful because what you're doing is giving them tools to be able to live in this hostile world and to be able to survive. Yeah, that's right. And that's, I mean, sometimes what we are is caretakers to what good medicine is trying to do, and that's okay, too, because people have to make choices. But at least we have tools. That's the beauty. The beauty is you got this tool that you can help when you know going into it is going to be a problem. Yep. Right? So that's the beauty. The beauty is, is knowing it's like, you know, guys play football and they wear pads. They know they're going to get banged up. But you know what? If somebody gets hurt, we have tools to be able to help them so they will get banged up again next week. Yep. Right? So that's the deal. So in life, it's beautiful to be in a position to have tools that can help. When good plans are well thought out, parents doing what they think is right, and we go, oops. Well, we can pick up pieces and help. I have a question. I have a little boy. He's nine, and he's got that spectrum, autism, OCD, ADD, all that. He gets very agitated and fearful and insecure. And I've never really thought about using the clean sweep with him, but, like, especially maybe at night when he wakes up and he feels fearful, if he has that to spray the room with, mm-hmm. do you think that that would be helpful? And then also, would healing love be good for him? Absolutely. Constance has a great story about a little boy that found the, the gentle boy inside, right? Right. There was a young boy, eight years old, and really a problem for his mother. Very mean. One day she was driving, and he's in the back seat, and he comes out, and he says, You know, Mom, I knew there was a good boy in me somewhere, and now he's out. That was a real revelation for the parents. And he was using the healing love? Yes. What about the clean sweet for fearfulness? Worked Um, extremely well. And actually, by spraying it in the room, in the corners of the room, and then when the little one's in bed, over the bed, I have two children that could not sleep. They were fearful. They were seeing ghosts in the closet and ghosts hanging on the chandeliers and the, uh, mm-hmm. in the corner and up on the cabinets and et cetera. And it was, would not put their arm over the side of the bed, nor would they uh, put their dangler feet over, that kind of thing. Just fearful. And then mm-hmm. up and down all night going in mommy's room because they're afraid because they're just afraid. And what happened is that by spraying this in the room, in the four corners, and over the bed while the child's in the bed, is that the first night the little one slept through the whole night. And mm-hmm. then within a stabilization process took place. 
And so I just used the 21-day habit uh, breaking thing. So I just told the mom, I said, keep spraying the room every day for 21 days, and we'll see what happens. Took about three or four months, and the little guy is doing just fine, and they don't. They still spray, but not as often. And the little guy is sleeping and is happy, and his fearfulness has you know, normalized. He's not in this agitated, fearful state. Get rid of or minimize the electromagnetic sources of stress in his room, especially baby monitors. They're the worst. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The things they hang in the cribs are horrible. You can measure them with a gauss meter from Radio Shack. Yeah. You can. I mean, it's real stuff. Oh, yeah, exactly right. Also, you need to check for geopathic stress, too. That's a big yeah. one. So what do you think of um, mattresses that have coils in them? Those usually, on, for sensitive people, it drives them crazy, but they don't know it. Yep, I agree. They're conductors of it. Inter- they like little antennas. Get rid of them. Okay. Thank you all so much for participating on the call. I hope that it was informative and beneficial. You can always contact us if you have any additional questions. Terminate the audio.